Despite boasting a large roster of 28 playable heroes, most matches in Overwatch see a familiar rotation of staple characters, such as Reinhardt, Widowmaker, Tracer, Mercy, Genji, Zenyatta, and Farah. Naturally, the other heroes see play as well, but how often you'll see them played in a competitive setting depends on the current meta. While adhering to the meta and playing a consistent set of heroes makes for competitive matches, sometimes, from a viewer's perspective, it can be tiring to see both teams play more or less the same characters. Because we as viewers are so used to seeing the same set of characters being played, it's always thrilling to see an unexpected hero pick or a sudden hero-specific specialist being brought in. Of all of the roster, Doomfist in particular is known to be such a hero, an anti-meta pick that is typically difficult to use effectively, and of the Doomfist specialists in Overwatch League, none are as prominent as Hydration. Joe Pedro Gosteles was born on March 8, 1999, in Minas Claros, located in the northern state of Minas Gerais, Brazil. As a child, he traveled the world with his family, an experience that helped to shape his interest in professional gaming. At age 7, his family moved to the United States of America, settling in North Carolina. Yet, just two years later, the family would relocate once again, this time to China where he attended an international school where Korean students made up 50% of the student body. As a result, the school had a big StarCraft culture. So from this, you could probably guess what his first video game was, Right to Rock Online. The Korean MMORPG became the starting point where he developed a passion for video games. He continued to play a variety of titles, and with his budding interest in competitive gaming, he took to Overwatch upon its 2016 release. Eventually, he would join team The 1% on August 30th, 2016. When he joined the team, he needed to make a crucial decision, picking a name. And of course, he gave it due diligence and chose only a fitting name. I needed a, to come up with a name, you know, something creative, something that stood out. So I looked around my room for some creativity and there's a bottle of Gatorade sitting on my desk. At the back of the bottle, it says the word hydration on it. I was like, that's perfect for a name. His time with the 1% was brief, and Hydration was later signed by the team at Counter Logic Gaming on December 16th, 2016. Now properly entering the pro scene, Hydration moved into a team house in LA with his team. However, this wasn't easy for his family. His mother could never imagine that her son would one day make a living playing a video game professionally. Even though she would miss her son, she could not be prouder, and sought to immerse herself in her son's craft. From knowing nothing about Overwatch, Hydration's mother learned the game, watching her son play it, reading about the game, and even going so far as to learn the names of the heroes and maps. With the full support of his family, Hydration played for Counterlogic Gaming throughout most of 2017. However, the team would constantly be stymied by the likes of Team Liquid, Luminosity Gaming, and Selfless Gaming. CLG's peak results in a major was a 4th place finish in Overwatch Pit Championship NA Season 1. As with many other NA Overwatch teams in 2017, the advent of the Overwatch League and its affiliated contender scene would see Logic Gaming disband its roster, leaving Hydration in the frightening position of needing to find a new team or else risk his career in Overwatch stagnating. But as luck would have it, Hydration would meet the players Bishu and I Remix at a tryout for NRG's Overwatch League team, the at the time unnamed LA Gladiators. His performance impressed both Bishu and iRemix so much that after they were signed to the team, they went so far as to recommend Hydration when the organization was looking to fill the rest of their roster. On November 2nd, 2017, Hydration was signed by the Gladiators, where he would join Surefor and Aster in the DPS position. Despite his achievement in making it to the Overwatch League as the only Brazilian player, this was not the last of his struggles, as the LA Gladiators would start the season as a lower middle team 
finishing the first stage in eighth place. The team needed more from their tank line and required their DPS to better compete with the best talent in the world. But in-game communication issues and individual mistakes would have the start of the Gladiator season begin not with a roar, but with a whimper. The organization would need to reevaluate their entire approach for the second stage, and critical changes were made. First, the coaching staff needed to see improvement from all of the players, both on an individual level, but also when playing together as a team. So they changed their review process. By watching VODs together as a team, and by working with each player individually, the coaches could point out individual mistakes and weaknesses in order to correct behaviors and misplays that were costing the team. This led to a steady increase in individual player performance, which Hydration felt was key in his own improvement over the season. The team also sought to make an addition to the roster, and news broke that the Gladiators would sign former London Spitfire player Fissure onto the team to level up both the tank line and take some weight off of the DPS. It quickly became clear in the second stage that their new tank had an immense talent and could carry fights. As well, their diligence paid off, and the entire roster played like an entirely different team. Overtime burns down, and the Los Angeles Gladiators win! However, a new problem had emerged. With the addition of Fissure as the main tank and shot caller, LA's in-game communications should have been cleaner than ever, with a clear, strong, and decisive in-game leader. Except for the fact that Fissure's primary language was Korean. Luckily, Bishu, the off-tank, was a bilingual Korean-English speaker and could translate Fissure's calls mid-game. But this translation took time and brain power away from the off-tank, while also creating delay between call and action. This generally resulted in less than stellar plays and sometimes feed dives. Yet despite this shortcoming, Stage 2 was a significant improvement from Stage 1, with the Gladiators making it into the upper half of the standings. But against powerful defensive teams, the bilingual nature of the team still caused an exploitable weakness in their synergy. While Fissure was in the spotlight throughout the stage, coaches and fans alike took note of Hydration's improved performance and his hero roster, with him emerging as one of the few players who would actually play Doomfist during a league match. Moving on to Stage 3, Surefor showed he was a Widowmaker to be feared. Some would claim it to be due to Fissure's infectious work attitude, while some would credit it to serious individual practice on Surefor's part. However, Surefor's rise as a premier Widowmaker also helped submit Hydration as the second DPS for the LA Gladiators. With Surefor's Widow becoming required by the meta on most maps of the Overwatch League, Hydration's Hero Pool helped in setting up high damage crossfires with Surefor, or playing fast in a full dive configuration with Surefor's Tracer. Stage 4 was where everything started falling into place. Fissure had finally been fully integrated into the team. Surefor was living up to his name on Widowmaker, and the team had new potent mid-game swaps due to Void and Silk Thread signing. LA Gladiators would dominate Stage 4, taking the top ranking, leading into the stage playoffs where they would fall to their rival team, the LA Valiant. Despite their rocky start, the LA Gladiators made it to the end of season playoffs where their results surprised everyone. Entering the playoffs as the fourth seed, their first opponent was the fifth placed London Spitfire, an opponent that the Gladiators had not lost a single series to since the signing of Fissure. Initially, the series seemed to be going in LA's favor, and the Gladiators would dominate the Spitfire 3-0 in their first meeting, even without Fissure on the field. However, the Spitfire came back, taking out the Gladiators in their next two series, winning their matchup 6-3. But even with a disappointing finish to a thrilling season, the LA Gladiators rise throughout the inaugural season was one of the most significant narratives of the Overwatch League. And even with the regular season over, Hydration was certainly not done playing. On July 4th, 2018, Team USA's Overwatch World Cup roster was unveiled, and among several returning players, it was announced that Hydration was also on the team. But we will have to wait and see how they will perform during BlizzCon. Hydration is a projectile specialist. He plays with a slightly higher sensitivity than most hitscan players, with a DPI of 800 and an in-game sensitivity of 5, for an overall EDPI of 4000. This is just barely higher than the average of 3000 to 3600 for most DPS players, but his EDPI is beneficial for the overswing aim that is useful for predictive projectiles. Hydration is one of the few players in the Overwatch League that uses Doomfist regularly. That's not to say he's the only one in the league who plays the hero, as the likes of Pine, Carpe, and Effect have donned the Golden Gauntlet at some point or another. 
It's more so how effectively he makes use of the character that has garnered such acclaim and makes him the standout Doomfist specialist. Hydration plays Doomfist as a disruptor. Instead of using Doomfist's mobility to set up guaranteed kill combos, he dives deep, going in with the friendly tanks and weaving throughout the fight, punching and slapping as many people as he can, sowing chaos, damage, and gaining shields the entire time. Eventually, the mass disruption Doomfist forces cracks in the enemy team, allowing him to secure the kill. He also plays the hero quite defensively, targeting characters that threaten Surefor's Widowmaker. This teamwork has helped secure big wins for the team. Of course, Hydration is capable of playing most of the DPS heroes at the highest levels, but his Fara is just as, if not more notable than his use of Doomfist. At one point, he was even considered to be one of the best Faras in the world. Hydration's Fara exerts total control over the space around him. Trying to approach him without a shield to hide behind will guarantee a quick trip back to spawn. He picks off enemies through coordinated attacks with his team in a supporting role, supplying damage and controlling angles on key targets. However, Hydration has shown if the enemy dares to forget about him in the sky, he will make them regret it. As he looks at pooping some people off the bridge, oh, and man, he does! Well, there goes Kareem! The Gladiators have been a team of growth, from the acquisition of Fissure to the evolution of Surefor's Widow, and finally Hydration's growing synergy with his team. From an 8th place finish in Stage 1 to finishing 1st in Stage 4, the Gladiators have proven that they are constantly improving. Now with the loss of Fissure in Season 2 of Overwatch League being balanced with the potential signing of Gladiator Legion Panker, it will be interesting to see what other moves the Gladiators will make in the offseason. With the newly expanded League in 2019, a lot of pressure will be put on their tank line. But regardless, we thirst to see more of Hydration's steady growth and incremental improvement in the near future, along with more of his Doomfist.